three NBA games tonight before the All-Star break. That's not stopping us, though. Mr. Brian Matthews, a.k.a. BMAT, a.k.a. the NBA prop god, joining us here on BMAT's NBA props. If you didn't imagine what this was about, I, I, I can't help you. Brian, appreciate you joining the show. I appreciate you having me as always. Let's, uh, let's get to it. We're in a bounce back spot. So, uh, so let's see what we can make of this light slate. Yeah, we're, we're in need of a bounce back spot. You know, this is, uh, we, we, we have full clarity here on the show. Um, I, I ended up splitting. I had just the, I, I did my round already of just like, just crying into the, uh, into the Oasis about uh, Jared Allen's PRA coming up half yeah. point short. Yeah. Um, hit those Brunson uh, over points, but you ended up going one and two. Uh, I mean, you did say, you know, with, with Vooch, you never know to take his points and rebounds, points and assists, rebounds, yeah. assists, end up choosing just a little wrong. Uh, you went one and two. I ended up pushing one and one, but it doesn't matter because you're going two and oh or three and oh today and I'm going two and oh today. So it, again, right. it's, it's all out the window. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> all right. Hit us with your first pick then for tonight. Again, we only have three games. Um, I'll, I'll I imagine you'll get into this, but just tell me how you kind of approach a slate that's this short and considering, you know, there are so many guys that you just don't really know their status and it's right before the All-Star break and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So I find these slates are actually the most valuable as far as, you know, teams mm -hmm. have guys that are sitting out, right? So you have a big name guy sit out and then a guy who hasn't gotten minutes all season all of a sudden is put into a role where he's getting, you know, 20, 25, sometimes 30 minutes. And they're chomping at the bit to get out there, right? So while you have some guys getting ready for the All-Star break, you've got the others that are sitting out there chomping at the bit. So that's so why doing this show at the time we do is a little tricky because a lot of the lines, you know, the books strategically hold them back until closer to the games. Uh, but I find a lot of the guys that they release a little bit later on, you know, have, have a little bit more value uh, as far as, you know, why they're holding them back. But you just got to find opportunities. So if someone's out for a team, you know, you got to pick the right matchup and, and try to avoid any potential blowouts. But it's the NBA that can happen on any night. Yeah, honestly, even if you do your due diligence and you try to avoid, you know, those those blowouts and those trick spots, they will yeah. get you regardless. Um, yep. But you said there's a lot of value on the board, so let's get after it. What is pick number one for you for tonight? All right, look, so pick number one for me, it's a, it's a pick I made last night. I'm going to go back to it today. So Chicago Bulls going against the Milwaukee Bucks. DeMar DeRozan has been confirmed out, and actually the pick is even made a little better by the fact that Alex Caruso has now been ruled out as well. So I'm going to go, and I played this yesterday up to six plus, uh, Ayo Desunmu uh, assists. So it's over three and a half right now. Look, I think if you look back into the last three games without DeMar DeRozan, he has had over 11 potential assists in each of those games. And he's had six, six, and five assists in his last three without him. So look, we're asking for four here. You know, last night, 11 potential assists. Some guys missed some, some good looks uh, to just fall short of the six plus, which I had him at. But uh you finish with five assists, the line opened back up at 3.5. I love the line. You know, and I'd even look at that six plus as a, uh, as a potential target, especially with Caruso out. Yeah, this is an interesting game because, you know, the Bucks played a couple of nights ago, and despite there yeah. being no Jason Tatum, no Jalen Brown, had to go to OT against the Celtics. But again, that, that's the classic team is still good, even without their star players, you know, kept it feisty type thing. But I mean, the, the Bulls are just have been one of the most disappointing, if not the most disappointing team in the NBA in the first half. I mean, there, there were high hopes, obviously, you know, there, there's no, uh, there's no Lonzo for the entire first half, which sucks. Caruso's missed a lot of time. It just, it just hasn't worked. Um, Levine played a lot of minutes last night. Again, no DeMar DeRozan. This is tricky. So I like going in a different direction. Um, I mean, yeah. they've got to score points eventually, right? So, someone's yeah. got to do it. So he might as well be dishing them out. Yeah, exactly right. And and we'll loop back. I've got a bonus pick that, that involves mm -hmm. this game, and it kind of loops back to players whose lines either are not released at all by the books or are released very last minute. So we'll, we'll get back to that, though. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen in the industry, we call that a teaser. BMAT, hit me with pick number two. All right, look, so this second one, I'm actually going to go – look, we're going to go with two guys that, that are, look, on, on what could be minutes limits, right? So we've got Devin Booker. Uh, this is going to be a three-person little same-game parlay. Uh, odds are much better at DraftKings. But I'm going to target the Clippers-Suns game on this one. So I'm going to go Devin Booker, 20-plus points, Kawhi Leonard, 20-plus points, and Chris Paul, 8-plus assists. So that comes out to plus 140 uh, or plus 130 over at DraftKings. Look, 
it doesn't doesn't need to be explained. Since Devin Booker came back, Chris Paul's assists have gone through the roof, and I don't think that that's a coincidence, right? Um, so now you, you've got more weapons to spread the ball to. You know, I like the spot for him. Uh, you look you look at Devin Booker. He's still on a minutes limit. You know, and that might be released. I don't think you know that that's going to be the case. I think they'll kind of try to ease him in, but. I mean, he's still putting up 25 a night, even in the, you know, 25, you know, whatever minutes they're giving him. So uh, like those three places, you know, and, and that kind of avoids any uh, potential, you know, guys falling one or two points short of their line and see if we can't go up 1.3 units on that. Yeah, full disclosure, um, I, I I already threw my bet in for this as soon as you told me you were rocking with this. Um, I, I really wanted to take uh, Chris Paul's over assist today, but I decided to, you know, get a little frisky, ended up changing my play anyway. So it's less frisky play. Um, but I, I, I like the Chris Paul number. I like the Devin Booker number. Um, and again, Kawhi, I like just bumping him down to 20 plus and just playing it a little safer um, yep. at that point. Okay. So we have, uh, we have one assist number. We have one same game parlay. Do we have a third pick outside of the bonus? Yeah, well, not, not right now. I, I'm, I'm waiting okay. on a few lines, and I don't know where they're going to end up at. I, I think I have a guess on the bonus pick. Uh, you know, and even if it's one up from where I think, I'd still play it. So, you know, I feel safe on that one at least. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come to center stage then. I'll give you my two best bets yeah, for tonight. For, for, for number one, I'm going to start with the Wizards. I'm going to go with Chris Tapps Porzingis over 23 and a half points. Best number you can get that at is minus 110 on bet MGM. Uh, anytime I can bet against Chris Dapps Porzingis is, is just brings happiness to my ears. But unfortunately, he has been cooking over the last couple of games. Uh, he has hit this number in five of his last eight games since he's come back from a three-game absence. You know, if you want to cherry pick a little more, he's hit this in five of his last seven, which looks nicer to me. Um, the games that he has missed this in, it was a 21-point win against San Antonio in his return game, a 23-point loss against Cleveland, and then a 15-point win over Indiana um, in which he played four minutes in the fourth quarter. So I'm not overly worried about the games he has missed. He's yeah. been cooking recently, averaging something like 27, 28 points per game since he's come back. Gobert, as of time of recording, is questionable, um, but either way, might be a little hampered. No Kyle Anderson, still no Carl Anthony Towns, and... Last time uh, Chris Epps Porzingis played against Minnesota, season high 41 points. So I really like this pick. Um, a, a different angle you can take um, on this is, is something that I was kind of uh, kind of flirting with, but we'll get to that on our uh, most popular bets uh, for DraftKings. What, what, do, what do we think? Hey, I, you know, I like it, man. Sticks has been cooking. You know, in the last matchup, what do you have, six, <laughs> six threes in that game? You said, was that a, a season best we had for him? A, he had a well. He had he had a. I think it was eight against Minnesota. He hit like six or seven a couple of nights ago. That's um, right. Yeah, I don't. I wasn't confident enough to take the threes, but so I just I, I stuck with the points there. Hey, look, it's like your Brunson pick the other night, man. Like sometimes you got to just say, you know, hey, look, I, the matchup isn't the greatest on paper, right? But hmm. the guy's cooking. And what he score that night? Thirty something. Yeah, yeah. I think he had thirty eight a couple yeah, nights ago. Thirty eight. Like, you know, and people were talking like, hey, that that twenty five and a half line that might be a little high, right? So look, yeah, you ended up on the right side of that one. Sometimes you just got to ride the hot hand. So I like it, man. I think even if Gobert plays, I think that forces you know Chris Stapps to settle for the not settle, but you know to hit the mid range jump shots. And he's been shooting mm -hmm. well from deep. So if he's if he gets hot early, watch out. All right. So my next pick uh, had to switch last second with Demar being announced out. Um, I was going to take his under 38 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Again, this isn't my official pick, but right. I'm just I'm giving you what I thought mm. of for this, just okay. in case something kind of grabs your attention. Um, when I checked, best number was minus 120 on points bet. Um, 40 minutes back-to-back -back games, no DeMar last night. Apparently that hamstring had been hurting him for a while, so he was a little limited against the Magic. Um, the game of four. This is a number he's only hit in five of his last 10, 11 of his last 20, um, and against Milwaukee in his two games. 28 points, rebounds, and assists, and then 30. The other one, DeMar was always the guy against Milwaukee. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this completely changes with DeMar out because Zach Levine becomes that guy when DeMar's out. Uh, so the 38 and a half points, rebounds, assists is not something I'm going to take. I am going to take, on the other hand, uh, Clippers money line against the Suns tonight. And look, if you had grabbed this a little earlier, you could have gotten it at plus money. 
I did get it a little earlier plus money, but for the show, I am taking it at that minus that minus number that you can get it at. Best number, I believe, was at BetMGM um, on last look. I, I just think that matchup wise, with no Kevin Durant, still this is a bad matchup for Phoenix. Um, everyone's kind of limping to the finish line, but you know Kawhi is playing tonight. And Phoenix ha- used to have that size with Mikael Bridges and just like an array of small forwards to throw yeah. at Kawhi and Paul George. But again, until you get KD back, you're still missing those guys. Like their bench unit is just not good um, right now. The Clippers short up their backup center spot. They have a little more depth as well on the wings. So I just think this is not a good matchup for Phoenix. And when it comes down to it, I know you talked about Devin Booker. I think he's going to get that 20. Don't worry. Um, I like but it. I I just think you're not, you know, if it, if it comes to it and Devin Booker's played 26 minutes and it's kind of out of reach, like they're not going to risk it. They're going to sit him. Um, they're not going to risk it. So I, I, I like the Clippers on the money line tonight. Okay. So you're saying try to make a play that was above 20 and, you know, with 20 plus, but under 28 and a half? Is that for, for, Booker? for Devin Booker? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to advise to do that, but yeah. I mean, if you want to get crazy, you can. Okay. All right. We'll see. There's a there's a reason I didn't take you know Devin Booker like under twenty eight and a half points and over twenty so there's, sure. there's a reason I'm coming here with a much more tame uh, Clippers Clippers money line uh, for tonight. Well, I'm curious your thoughts though on the uh, on the Zach Levine one again thirty eight and a half points rebounds and assists. Yeah, so I like the number's high right, but you look at his usage, it's very high. So it's you know, and it's just, is he going to be scoring? I mean, yeah, you know, last game he was on a triple-double hunt. You know, it looked like for a little bit that might be something that he could get. Uh, so it's tough because the number looks high, right? And you say, like, yeah, I want to take the under. But then if you look in games without DeRozan, you know, you go, okay, yeah, his usage definitely increases. Uh, it's still a very high number, and Milwaukee is still very good defensively. So, you know, I, I've said this many times. I think life's a little too short to take unders, uh, unless it's somewhere I see it. I'm like, yeah, that's a blatantly wrong line, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's a solid lean. I just I wouldn't join in with you. They're they're a little too sweaty. Yeah, I don't know. Taking a under points, rebounds, and assists on the only guy who is like truly capable of right. making his own offense at an efficient clip is uh, yeah, definitely a way to, to definitely a way to spend your Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, BMAT, let's, uh, before we wrap things up, let's just go through our top five most popular player props according to DraftKings. Again, the odds we're going to give you are according to DraftKings, but make sure you are using our grid to make sure you get the best odds across any sports book. Also, if you're watching wherever you are, make sure you're subscribing to us on YouTube. We're giving away 500 bucks this month just for subscribing. All you have to do is comment on any of our videos. Can be this one, can be any video you see. Comment BMAT to let us know we sent you we just launched a new nba show as well i get a chance to chat with jonathan macri of nick's film school every tuesday and thursday just to talk about the the state of the the nba we talked about the all-star break and also just our best bets for the night so we have you completely covered on the hoops again between college basketball and nba all right b matt i'm going to give you the top five here we have a little bit of plus value finally to shake things up we got deandre ayton over 11 and a half rebounds at plus 100 jane mcdaniels over three and a half rebounds minus 135 chris Stapps for zingas over 35.5 points assists and rebounds at minus 110 chris paul over 29.5 points assists rebounds minus 110 as well and then Kawhi leonard over 23.5 points minus 120 just going off of those picks it seems like we're in line with what people think uh, is going to happen. Give me, give me your pulse on these. Yeah, so I like, look, I like Kawhi. I feel like the other night the line felt too low, right? And everyone was saying, yeah, all right, they're going to be rested. And then I think they, they ended up leading the Clippers, you know, uh, Kawhi and Paul George in minutes played in the first half. So, so you, really, you really don't know what you're going to get with Ty Lue. Um, You know, as far as Chris Paul's PRA, yeah, that's, that's actually, a, you know, a solid number. I just worry about you with him. It's always a scoring. Like, I've run a double-double with him, and he hasn't gotten the 10 points. I go, yeah, I should have just run those 10 assists, right? That, was, that wasn't the move. Um, so, you know, with him, it's it's always tough. But he has been playing well. They don't have Durant, Bridges, Johnson. You know, uh, Durant will be back. The others are gone. So, you know, he might have to do a little more scoring. Uh, so that, that might be a decent look. But, you know, I'm going to be honest. Tonight I'm kind of fading the board outside of potentially Kyrie – or, uh, pardon me, Kyrie, uh, Kawhi points. Hmm. Yeah, I th- this Chris Stapps line for the 
And let, let, let's let's get one thing clear. It, it, it's points, rebounds, and assists. It's not points, assists, and rebounds. PRA sounds so much better than PAR. I agree. Uh, but yeah, I digress. Um, this Chris Tapps thing, I was between the points, again, at 23 and a half and the PRA at 35 and a half. But, I mean, for me, I, I looked through it. I was like, okay, does he usually not hit the points, but he gets the rebounds or something? He's hit it at the same exact efficiency uh, for mm-hmm. his points and for his rebounds and assists. At that point, I'm just like, okay, let me just take the points and leave less things to chance um, if you're getting the, the same odds, basically. So I don't yeah. I don't understand taking the, the PRA over the points itself, um, but it's it's in line with what I'm thinking, so I'm, I'm not going to crap on the pick too much, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like it just – and Rudy Gobert is a tough – you know, like don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's going to score 20. He's not tough like that, you know, but he's he's a big body, right? That's going to be – so if he plays, then you got to worry about those rebounds a little bit more, and it's a pretty big number. So all of a sudden you're like, all right, can he get 10 rebounds against, you know, Gobert if, if Gobert is bodying him up? Like do we do we trust him for that? So that's where I – you know, I would say, all right, yeah, lean to, to the points, you know, and, and if you're feeling a little riskier, the three-pointers. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Chris Stapps hater, so I don't really want to give him any more opportunity to like just yeah. tank me. Hey, Again, we got I, our guys, I mean, man. Everyone's got their yeah, guys. Yeah. Okay, um, we we hit all of this. I know you had one bonus pick slash piece of advice. Yeah. Let, lay it on us before we get out of here. All right. So yeah, yesterday I waited all day for the books to release Kobe White uh, three pointers, and he plays. That, that's uh, when you know, right? <laughs> What's that? That's when you that's when you know when you're waiting all day for Kobe White three points. No, I mean yesterday was pretty crazy. I was waiting for Zach Collins props. I mean, we were on a, a different level last Josh Akogi, you know, someone I almost brought up here. Uh so yeah, we were we were playing uh, you know, the the bare bones game last night. But uh look, if if Kobe White three pointers do get listed, I would highly advise playing those. They did not release him last night. He ended up finishing with five three pointers made. What a shocker that a guy they don't release hits five. Uh, so if they do release it, you know, you might need to uh, to do the refresh closer to tip off. But yeah, if those come out at, you know, one and a half, even two and a half at plus money, then I'd take that for sure. Is there any number you, you don't take that at that it could realistically come out at? No, I mean, I think if they release it at one, I think if they release it at minus 1.5, then you're probably at minus 160, 165 value. So at that point, you know, unless you're ready to throw, you know, 1.6 units to win, you know, one. Um, you know, I'd probably bump it up to 2.5. The volume will be there, and, and Milwaukee's got big bodies inside. Okay, I like it. All right, you have five official picks. You have one piece of advice, borderline six or seven picks to rock with, and only three games. So there's no reason not to take them. As always, he's Brian Matthews, a.k.a. BMET. You can follow him on Twitter, at the underscore BMET. Also get all his articles, his prop sheets for every single NBA slate, though, Today is a little bit of a rough slate, um, so we'll, yeah. we'll wait till after the All-Star break uh, for that. You can read all his stuff on oddschecker.com slash US and also follow him on Twitter as well. BMET, I will talk to you after the All-Star break. Enjoy the time off. Enjoy the recharge, and let's hit it hard uh, for, for half number two of the NBA. Hey, that's right, man. Just you watch. A week after we're in to, uh, to the second half, we're not going to be talking about it. You know, having down days, we're going to be uh, risking some units on some triple doubles and something wild to keep building up, you know. I mean, you were doing that regardless. So I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll leave that to you. I'll, I'll work my way back, slow and steady. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Appreciate you having me on.